A new Cold War would only be a tragedy for the entire humanity. To our encouragement, under the guidance of our leaders and with joint efforts, the China-US relationship has seen some positive signs of stabilizing. and also the enduring friendship between China and the United States. We're delighted to be joined by so many friends, including American friends from various communities and many fellow Chinese. A very warm welcome, and thank you all for sharing our joy tonight. Operated respect for and protection of human rights into its constitution. And our modernization is ultimately about the free and well-rounded development of people. Fourth, it is the modernization of harmony between humanity and nature. China has seen the fastest improvements in air quality and reduction in energy intensity globally. It is home to the largest afforested area in the world and the biggest in stored capacity of work of wind and solar power. We will move from carbon peaking to carbon neutrality in the shortest time span in human history. Fifth, it is also the modernization of peaceful development. We have put forward the Global Development Initiative, the Global Security Initiative, and the Global Civilization Initiative, offering China's solution for addressing the deficit in development, overcoming security challenges, and enhancing mutual learning between civilizations, and calling on countries to jointly build a community with a shared future for mankind. This year, amid the tortuous global economic recovery, every country has its own problems to tackle. While facing some difficulties and challenges, the Chinese economy has been on an upward trajectory generally. Our GDP grew 5.5% in the first half of this year, outpacing most major economies. In the first eight months, investment in high-tech industries grew 11% year over year, and retail sales in accommodation catering and other services increased 19%. Over 500 million Chinese went to the movies this summer. In recent months, China has rolled out new policies to invigorate consumption, boost the private sector, and attract more foreign investment, which are gradually paying off. Things are not best are best appreciated when, uh, when one takes a longer term view. The fundamentals sustaining China's growth in the long run have not and will not change. Choosing China is to embrace opportunities and secure the future. The notion that other countries could economically collect while one still thrives is utter fantasy. Pulling together is our only choice. Ladies and gentlemen, time flies, and it has been four months since my arrival in the United States. I would like to take this opportunity to express once again my heartfelt thanks to the American government and friends for facilitating and supporting my performance of duty. Over the months, I have engaged extensively with friends, old and new, from various sectors. And here is my impression. While a lot has changed in China-US relations, the fact that we are interdependent has not changed. We still share extensive common interests and important common responsibilities. 
The earth is big enough for China and the United States to develop respectively and prosper together. Second, our people's enthusiasm about greater exchanges and cooperation has not changed. Upon my arrival, an American netizen left a comment on my Twitter saying that I hope you find some allies. There are a few hiding in the darkness, afraid of being crushed. I am heartened to see more American friends with vision and courage have come out to speak up for and take actions to promote China-US friendship and mutually beneficial cooperation. The call for stabilizing and improving China-US relations is growing ever stronger. Third, nor has the international community's expectation for a generally stable China-US relationship changed as soon as possible. All in all, we hope the United States will work with us in the same direction, clear obstacles and manage differences with concrete actions, and enhance dialogue and expand cooperation in good faith so as to stabilize and improve our relations. Ladies and gentlemen, in two days, we will be celebrating the Mid-Autumn Festival, a time for gathering with loved ones and savoring memorable moments together, and also to eat mom cake. <laughs> Today, I'm happy to have one of my old friends here, Dr. Joseph Polisi, President Emeritus of the Julian School. He who has led a delegation to our embassy and who will bring us a wonderful performance. With the support from both sides, the Tianjin Julian School has become a shining example of China US cooperation in running schools and people to people exchanges. A number of young artists from around the world have got the highest caliber training and stepped onto the international stage. Earlier this year, Ms. Lee Young Eun from the Republic of Korea, a graduate of Tianjin Juliet, won the 2023 International Tchaikovsky competition in the cello category. Tonight, artists from Juliet will treat us to the fusion of classical Chinese and Western music thus uh, including colorful clouds chasing the, chasing the moon. What a romantic name. Thus showcasing the magic chemistry when the East meets the West, reminding us again of the deep bonds between our two peoples. Now I would like to propose a toast to the 74th birthday of the People's Republic of China, to the friendship and the cooperation between the peoples of China and the United States, to the health and happiness of all the guests here and your loved ones. Cheers.
We are ending with colorful clouds chasing the moon, as His Excellency called us, in honor of the Mid-Autumn Festival. Juilliard is in New York City. We have about 700 music students. We have a dance and drama division. And one very special part of Juilliard is that we have a campus in Tianjin. And we have students from Juilliard, New York going to Tianjin, and students from Tianjin, Juilliard going to New York. And uh, the conservatory is not old, but we are very proud of the excellence and the standard of excellence, Juilliard excellence, that we see there. It is a unique vision of our president emeritus, Joseph Alisi, who is with us today in the audience. It is bridge building between two countries and showing what's possible when we make beautiful music together. So I would like to bring out the students and briefly introduce each of them to you, please. Thank you so much. Uh, of the 700 students that we have, these are three extraordinarily gifted, well, they are all extraordinarily gifted. <laughs> these are absolutely wonderful students you're about to hear from. Let's start with you, Tony, can you just tell us something about yourself? Uh, hi everyone, my name is Tony Yun, and I am a current Juilliard student. Um, I'm there actually for eight years because I went to also the pre-college program, so yeah, now I'm just finishing up my bachelor's degree. Um, yeah, so uh, I was born in Canada, and I was uh, uh, four years old in Beijing, and I lived in Beijing for ten years, and I came to New York to New York to Juilliard. So, yeah, I'm very happy to be here today to celebrate this day. Okay, and Chungkuk Kwan has also? No. Hi everyone, my name is Jenny Jin. I'm uh, from South Korea. I came to the United States uh, when I was nine to study music. Um, currently, I'm a third year bachelor's at Juilliard, and I'm so happy to be here. Thank you. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm so honored to play for you today. We are all so excited. I am Mongolian Chinese. My name is Namisa. I'm I'm Beijing. Well, dear friends, to ensure everyone can fully enjoy the concert, may I request you to kindly silence or turn off your mobile phones. And please refrain from taking photos or videos during the performance, but immerse yourself fully in the live experience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please sit back and enjoy the wonderful journey of music. <laughs> <laughs> 